In cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service, the following broadcast is one of the radio programs selected to be short-waved to our Armed Forces Overseas. Bristol Myers, the makers of Ipana, famous toothpaste and minute rub, modern chest rub, take you now to Duffy's Tavern. <laughs> Hello, Duffy's Tavern, where the elite meet the Archie the manager speaking. Duffy ain't here. Oh, hello, Duffy. Duffy, you're a son for sore ears. Yeah, I ain't listened to your voice all summer. And you know something, Duffy? As stupid and obnoxious and thick-headed and ugly as you are, I missed you. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not just saying it to flatter you. No, not to get a raise, but <laughs> I can see that you're the same old tight-fisted Duffy. You hate to part with a buck, don't you? Uh, which, by the way, reminds me. Rudy Valley is coming down here tonight. Yeah, you know the guy, Duffy. My time is <laughs> Yeah. Huh? What am I doing? I'm holding me nose. <laughs> you are too, huh? <laughs> Uh, now listen, Duffy, I got an idea that might double our business, maybe even uh, treble or quibble it. <laughs> well, here's the idea. Valley's back on the radio, and I'm going to try to get him to put on his broadcast from the joint here every week. Well, maybe you think so. Maybe I think so, but <laughs> after all, what's our opinion against the million stupid dames? <laughs> Uh, well, leave me handle it, Duffy. I'll call you back later, huh? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the gala reopening of Duffy's Tavern. Come in and meet Finnegan, Eddie the Waiter, Miss Duffy, Matty Malnick and his orchestra, our special guest tonight, Rudy Valley, and Archie himself, Ed Gardner. Brought to you by two products that will pay you to remember. Minute Rub, if you have a cold. Ipana Toothpaste, if you want a more attractive smile. Minute Rub, Ipana. Well, Eddie. Well, Mr. Archie. Here we are. Here we are. You and me. You and me. Back at Duffy. Back at Duffy. Great feeling, ain't it? Stop the train. I'm getting off. <laughs> Now, that ain't nice, Eddie. Duffy's Tavern is like a home. We should cherish it and love it. And Duffy, too. A guy who picked us up out of the gutter and brought us here. Uh, Miss Archie, from the gutter to Duffy's Tavern is not up. <laughs> what are you kicking about? What's your salary now? Same as last year. Nothing. But where do your tips come to? A little less than the salary How can your tips come to less than nothing? Well, it's very simple Several of our customers are pickpockets <laughs> well, Listen, Eddie Your worries is going to be over Duffy's Tavern is about to undergo a transmosis A what? A trans... You know what it means? No then what's the use of repeating it? <laughs> but believe me, big things is gonna happen, Eddie. One, Rudy Valley is coming down here. Two, I'm gonna get him to broadcast from here. Three, Duffy's Tavern will become world famous. Four, five, six. Four, five, six? What's that? That's the number of your room in the asylum. <laughs> Eddie, uh, are you inferring me as a dope? I didn't say you were a dope. Do you deny it? No. <laughs> That's better uh, <clears throat> You know, uh, there's a lot dopier guys in the world than me Good <laughs> Well, Finnegan, uh, saludos, amigos uh, Saludos, amigos, to you, why? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all <laughs> Well, Finnegan, you're looking in the pink well, I guess that's because I never tanned. <laughs> so imagine I was at the beach all summer and no tan. 
Well, you've probably got one of them fair skins, you know, too much uh, pigment and not enough uh, hemoglobin. Uh, <coughs> Uh, what did you, uh, do at the beach all summer? No, I was a professional baseball player. Where did you play? In the little booth on the boardwalk. I used to stick my head out through a hole in the curtain and the fellas would pitch to me. <laughs> a professional ball player. Uh, did any of the fellas, pray chance, ever hit you in the head with the ball? No, sure, I... We had some swell pitches. Yeah, huh? Yeah. Uh, didn't it bother you when you got hit in the head? I didn't notice it so much. You didn't notice it, huh? No. On account of the other side, they were throwing darts. <laughs> well, it sounds like you was kept quite busy. Uh, by the way, uh, did you... Did you see any cute uh, bathing suits at the beach? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Couple of beauts, George. Yeah. Uh, but they ain't what they used to be. No. Uh -huh. No, have you seen them bathing suits this year? What's wrong with them? They got them so small, there ain't nothing to look at no more. <laughs> Ah, Finnegan, you're a caution. Look, uh, excuse a minute. Eddie, leave us uh, uh, busy up the joint here. Now, how about cleaning up some of that dust that has been accumulating all summer? Now, I already got through with the dust from this summer, so I'm now working on the summer of 1939. Oh. <laughs> leave us this base with the width, though, huh? Uh, look how the furniture looks here, Eddie. Look. Look over there. What's that chewing gum doing on that chair? Holding it together. <laughs> Did you clean out that telephone booth? No, I can't. See, a family of mice that moved in and set up housekeeping. Well, clear them out. No, can't do that neither. Why not? Well, you see, the OPA say you got to give them 90 days notice. <laughs> Eddie, maybe you better think up a funny ad for the situation, one would call them, huh? You're so funny. <laughs> <clears throat> Now, come on, everybody. Rudy will be here soon, and... Uh, the high got... Rudy? Yeah, uh, Rudy Valley, do you know? No, but I know his cousin, Sam Fernando Valley. <laughs> 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 That's a good joke, Arch. <laughs> hey, what's the matter, Arch? You ain't laughing. That's the way it's going to be. <laughs> so, look, maybe you don't get the joke, Arch. You see, the Rudy Valley and San Fernando Valley ain't related. They're two different guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, good get. Have done with this baboonery. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Well, Miss Duffy, how are you? How do you feel at your vacation? As single as ever. Couldn't get a guy, huh? Oh, no. I could have had dozens of fellas just by lifting a finger. Well, where you make your mistake is that the finger you lift is the third one on your left hand. <laughs> <laughs> you like old dames, Miss Guppy. You're too anxious. Men are just as anxious as women. Oh, yeah? You ever see a guy with a hope chest? <laughs> <laughs> well, I see say that men are just as anxious as women. Don't forget that at every wedding, one of the parties concerned is a man. Yeah. <laughs> and at every murder, one of the parties concerned is a corpse. <laughs> but that don't mean the guy was anxious. <laughs> oh, you're all alike, you men. Sometimes I wish there was something else a girl could marry. <laughs> So do us men. <laughs> now, look, don't bother me. Rudy Valley is coming Rudy down. Va Rudy, Rudy Valley himself? Dames <laughs> ain't anxious, huh? Well, I think it's my patriotic duty to be nice to a member of the Coast Guard. Yeah, but he's out of the Coast Guard. He's a civilian. What about the home front? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be nice to Rudy. What a man. What a... Say, uh... Archie, who is that handsome fella over there? Oh, Miss Duffy, do you all guys is handsome? What, what guy? That one. Oh, well, I don't... Hey, bud, uh, what, what's the name? Name? Ipana. 
That's a toothpaste. Not a toothpaste. It's the toothpaste that's famous for the smile of beauty. But what's your name? Mm, Owen. What? Owen, Owen what? Owen to the fact that I pan is unsurpassed in cleaning and brightening teeth. <laughs> <laughs> and I pan when used with massage, gives gums the stimulation they need and helps give you a more attractive smile. Yes, thousands of people know about and practice this famous healthful routine. Brush your teeth regularly with Ipana toothpaste. And every time you do, put a little extra Ipana on your brush or fingertip and massage it on your gum. Ladies and gentlemen, remember that famous way to take proper care of an attractive smile. See how much brighter your teeth, how much firmer your gums, and how much more beautiful your smile when you use Ipana toothpaste and gum massage. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hello, Duffy. No, Valley ain't here yet. Uh, oh, everybody else is here. Moriarty, Callahan, Second Story Jackson. Well, uh, Jackson's here with the uh, widow Murphy. Uh, huh? Jackson's wife? Uh, she divorced him. Yeah. Mental cruelty. He kept hitting her on the head. <laughs> You know, I can't wait for Rhoda to get here. You know, this broadcast is going to... Your time, your time, your time is my turn. I'll call you back, Duffy. <laughs> well, Rhoda, leave me bid you a fun high ho to Duffy's Tavern, the Valhalla of the Gourmet. And uh, leave me say that seldom has uh, such a dubious personality that thinks you die out there yet. Uh, welcome, vagabond lover. Thank you, vagabond. You're welcome. I know it was you, you know, Rudy, without even looking at you. Them golden tones could have come out of only one nose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're the same old Rudy. How do you mean? The way you came in singing. Unstinting with your talent, you know. Singing for all mankind, whether they want to hear you or not. A dubious compliment. And from me, huh? By the way, Rhody, you, you've never been to Duffy's before, have you? No, I haven't. How come? Oh, I guess I've just been lucky, Lager. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. Uh, how, how, how do you uh, like the joint? Mm, it looks like... Uh, well, when I went to Yale, this is what we always said we'd do to Harvard. <laughs> Just a second, Mr. Valley. I, uh, I brooked that as a slap in the kisser at me, Elma Mater. You, a Harvard man? What do I look like? A Harvard man. <laughs> Naturally. <laughs> Of course, I lost most of my Harvard accent. Although, uh, occasionally it crawls through. Uh, I find myself saying I'm going to take a ball <laughs> no, instead of a bat. <laughs> but uh, that don't happen very often. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, why, did, why did you leave Harvard? Girl trouble. There are no girls in Harvard. That was the trouble. <laughs> well, anyways... Oh, I... yeah. Rudy Valley. You're Rudy Valley. Yes. Rudy Valley. That's right. Rudy Valley. In the flesh. I wouldn't go anywhere without it. <laughs> uh, Rudy, uh, leave me present you with Miss Duffy. Miss Duffy is the daughter of this establishment. I can see the resemblance. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Valley, I I've admired you for years. Fill the signs to the Romaine Shout uh, Very nice, Miss Duffy, very nice Of course, I didn't think you were old enough To remember the Maine Stein song Are you kidding? <laughs> this dame remembers the Maine <laughs> Archie, I think Mr. Valley and I Would like to be alone Am I right, Mr. Valley? Well, I know I'd like to be alone <laughs> Oh, you know you know, Mr. Valley, I've always thought that you was the greatest singer on the air. Why, in the universe, and I've always... Miss Duffy, please. Archie, let the girl speak. <laughs> oh, Mr. Valley, Rudy, would you sing something for us now? Miss Duffy, please, who is running this joint? 
But don't you want him to sing? That is neither neither here nor there. <laughs> the point is that I do the asking. Well, then you ask him. Now I got no choice. <laughs> uh, Rudy, would you oblige us with a number? Well, if you insist. Oh, but I do. <laughs> oh, sure. I'll announce you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Rudy Valley, <clears throat> the lucky lager man, uh, has kindly consented to sing a song for us. Uh, and under them circumstances, uh, I think it's no more than fair that we should listen. Huh? <laughs> uh, proceed ahead, Rudy. <laughs> Time waits for no one It passes you by It rolls on forever Like the clouds in the sky Time waits for no one It goes on endlessly It's just like a river Flowing out to the sea You'll find that love is like this Each precious moment we miss Will never ever return again So don't let us throw one Sweet moment away Time waits for no Let's take love while we may You'll find that love is like this Each precious moment we miss Will never, ever return again So don't let us throw Sweet moment away Time waits for no one. Let's take love while we may. That was really great. Great? Why, it was magnificent, stupendous. Glorious. No, no, Miss Duffy. I have to agree with Archie this time. I think it is no more than great. <laughs> Look at how modest he is. Such a verse. Ah, oh, Rudy, let all those other girls have their synopsis and their Crosby's and their Ames's and their Comos's. But you and I, Mr. Valley, we have each other. Miss Duffy, I'd like to say something to you that I've never said to any other woman. What is it, Rudy? Scram, will you? <laughs> oh, how masterful. Well, I'll, I'll see you later, Rudy. Uh, hey, Mr. Valley, uh, that was very pretty. Uh, very pretty. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, it's, it's hard to please me because I'm tone deaf. <laughs> Finnegan. Uh, Rudy, this is Clifton Finnegan. How do you do, Mr. Finnegan? Mr. Uh, just call me Clifton. I ain't married. <laughs> You're not married? No. Who's the lucky girl? <laughs> I ain't got no girl. Well, I bet you I could have one if I look like you. Uh, boy, them coils. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, is that a permanent? Finnegan, what a question. It's all right, Archie. This is not a permanent. See what a stupid question that was, Finnegan? You think he'd admit it? <laughs> now, look, Clifton, excuse us. Uh, we got to talk some business here. Rudy, uh, first of all, leave us, uh, facilitate you on being back on the air. Thank you, Archie. Did you by any chance hear our first show? Yeah. Well, you can't please everybody. <laughs> I wish you could please somebody. <laughs> Uh, now, look, Rudy, I got a hunch what's wrong, you see? It's them radio studios. Now, when you first got hot on the radio, where did you broadcast from? A nightclub. Precisely. A nightclub where there is gaiety and laughter and joyous unreclined. 
Now, for instance, if you put it on your broadcast from this place, you... J just a second. Are you suggesting that I put on my broadcast from your little bistro? No, it's so small. Uh, who ever heard of broadcasting from a kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be nice for you, too, Rudy. You know, once again, you'll, you'll be back in familiar surroundings. Once again, you'll be that old valley, that near lisp of a lad, who one day picked up a megaphone and blasted his way into America's heart. Think it over, Rudy. Stay on it, yeah, Owen, I'll be right back, Rudy. Think it over again. I, I, what do you want, Owen? See, Arch, aren't you being a little hasty? Listen, you get Rudy to sing here in this drafty joint, and what happens? You tell me. <laughs> he gets a cold. His muscles ache, and worst of all, his nose is stuffed up. <laughs> so what? <laughs> so make sure you have Minute Rub handy. Boy, I'd like to tell that to everyone, because when a cold makes you miserable, Minute Rub helps bring quick relief from those cold symptoms. Just rub Minute Rub on your back and chest. Even before you finish, you feel a comforting sensation of warmth as Minute Rub begins to get to work to soothe the tightness and discomfort caused by your cold. And at the same time, Minute Rub gives off active mental vapors that help relieve the stuffed-up feeling in your nose and throat. Minute Rub is greaseless, stainless, seems to disappear as you rub it on. So be ready to get after your cold symptoms with this famous chest rub that helps bring such fast relief that takes only a minute to use. Minute rub. Hello, Duffy. Yeah, Rudy's here. And I think I'm going to put him uh, on a regular weekly program from the joint here. Huh? So watch <laughs> These crumbs around here will probably think it's great. <laughs> huh? Oh. Okay. Uh, Rudy... Uh, Duffy I... wants to hear me sing again? Perish for bed. <laughs> he would just like to know what else you do on this program, you know. He probably just wants to check you for moral tendencies. Uh, <laughs> what else would you do? Well, I tell jokes on the program. Jokes, huh? Yes, it's a... Uh... Humorous program. Lots of gay badinage. Yeah, huh? <laughs> yes, sir. Archie, have you heard the joke about Ruth? No. It's just as well. It's over your head. <laughs> uh -huh. is, uh, is that badinage? Yeah. You tell jokes like that around Duffy and your head will be wrapped in a badinage. <laughs> now, look. Tell Duffy a different joke and... Leave us not sick in them, huh? All right, but you have to help me on this one. Just ask me how I feel. Okay, uh, Rudy, how do you feel? Not so good. You see, I took a bite out of my pillow last night, and I've been feeling down in the mouth ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Duffy. Huh? From the what out of here? Duffy, give the guy a chance. <laughs> well, Rudy, so far, so good. <laughs> Rudy, I remember you used to interview celebrities on your program, you know, in the old days. Interesting guys. Uh, you know, we got plenty of them around here. Who, for instance? Well, uh, take Carrigan over there. Where? That quiet guy, uh, laying under the table. <laughs> Now, that guy looks very ordinary, but you know that he has got ten toes? Oh, what? Everyone has ten toes. Split seven and three? <laughs> <laughs> and take uh, Dynamite Donegan over there. Could be a very heartbreaking interview, Rudy. The guy has been carrying a torch for 15 years. For the same girl? No, for the same safe. Uh, <laughs> he is one of the most interesting obsessions you have ever come across. And take me, you know. Uh, me, myself, could be a very good interview. Why? Well, I'm jovial and jolly. <laughs> uh, well, look, why don't we try it? Uh, like, like you used to do on a radio. Come on, uh, music, Matty, huh? <laughs> Thank you. 
Good evening, Archie. Good evening, Mr. Valley. How are you tonight, Archie? Uh, fine, Mr. Valley. And how's yourself? Oh, pretty fair. What new? Oh, nothing much. <laughs> Boy, we're hot tonight, huh? <laughs> well, Archie, so you are the brilliant manager of Duffy's Tavern. Well, Mr. Valley, uh, uh, yes, indeedy. Uh, although brilliant is a pretty extravagant word. <laughs> well, what word would you use? Well, uh, Yes, brilliant covers it. <laughs> and as I understand it, you really are the brains of Duffy's, are you not? On the contrary, sir, I am. Uh, <laughs> you see, <laughs> after all, well, sir, every keystone has to have an arch. Or an archie. <laughs> Just having my little joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as little a joke as I ever heard. <laughs> Uh, pardon me, biting wit. Your wit isn't biting, it's teething. <laughs> well, Archie, do you find your work interesting? Well, sir, yes, sir. You see, a place like Duffy's is like a grand hotel. People come, people go. They have their little foibles and their uh, big flights. They come in, eat here, and pass on. <laughs> well, sir, that's how it goes. Then, by and large, one could say that you were a happy man. Well, sir, by and large, one could. I don't get paid much money, but I make it up in other ways. <laughs> Duffy, I did not admit robbing the register. <laughs> well, did you ever see me rob the register? Your wife seen me? It's a lie. She was never here when I did it. <laughs> Okay, I accept your apology. Uh, <clears throat> what'd you think of the interview? Well, Duffy, leave us give the guy one more chance. He must have some talent. Uh, well, wait a minute. Uh, Rudy, uh, what else uh, could you plan to do on this radio show? I was contemplating playing the saxophone. Duffy, I'll call you back. <laughs> Rudy, did you say saxophone? Yes. Well, we're in this deep, we might as well go ahead. Uh, why did I ever get into this radio business? Oh, oh, that is hard. Oh, it's broken, yeah. So should your head. Hey, look, Rudy, that ain't no instrument. That is a secret weapon. Why don't you sell that to the American forces? Eisenhower could use it. Once again, that sax rears its ugly head. Look at Oh, this is horrible. Oh, Rudy, Rudy, you gotta quit it. Rudy, is this? Just a second. Now, hello. Hello, Duffy. Okay, no argument. For the first time in my life, I agree with you. Uh, Rudy, in the future, as far as Duffy's Tavern is concerned, uh... Your time is your time. Uh, no hard feelings, of course. Uh, we still think that you're as good as you ever was. Uh, and I'll be glad to drop around to see you sometime. How about tomorrow night, Saturday? Okay, tomorrow night, Saturday. Uh, from the radio studio, of course. Of course. If Proctor can take a gamble, so can I. Oh! <laughs> Well, it's time to leave Duffy's Tavern for this evening. Let's all meet here again next week when our guest will be Gene Tierney. Duffy's Tavern, what are you late, mate? Dude, Archie the manager speaking. <clears throat> Hello, Duffy. Yeah, that's right. Next week, uh, Gene Tierney. And be sure to listen to me tomorrow night with Rudy Valley. What? Two wrongs don't make a right. <laughs> hey, that's a good insult, Duffy. I'll have to remember it. Yeah, I saw you back. <laughs> This is the National Broadcasting Company.